Executive Director of MCA Senior Adult Day Center. Um, it's going to be coming soon here in Kankakee. So I'll be providing services to the elderly community, age 60 and older. I'm going to provide medical services, social um, activities, meals, transportation, and um, just being that overall um, center to bridge the gap between the hospital and long-term care. So uh, <laughs> with that being said, a little bit about me getting to that journey. It's definitely been um, a struggle. So <laughs> I, I too battled with um, a lot of insecurities, a lot of traumas. Um, I had a divorce happen. I'm a mother to three kids who just require all of my attention. So um, when God spoke to me about stepping into my purpose, I questioned it. <laughs> I said, no, I'm afraid. I don't want to do it. You know, and so I resisted that for a long time. Um, I went and got my master's degree. I have a bachelor's degree. I'm a respiratory therapist by background, so I'm, I'm a completely accomplished, and I have the success, but I didn't believe it. I didn't feel it, and there was barriers because of everything that I went through. So um, speaking of mental health and, and um, getting yourself to the point to where you can step into that was, was a battle for me. And so um, for me, I think that the transformation started from the end when my spiritual life started to uh, grow. And so for me, um, it was it was just getting into the comfort zone, getting out of my comfort zone and into um, a space where I found people that really was like-minded like me. Um, and that involved me stepping away from everything that I knew. My family, my friends, my workplace, and also my marriage. So, um, and I found that. So with that combination and partnership with God, I was able to step and be here today. Uh, thanks to Sakara and Aaron, um, they've introduced me to so many people, Jeff, Mr. Hutt, Derek, Mr. Alfred, and then also Mrs. Alfred as well. So um, I just want to thank you guys for that opportunity. And then um, just trusting me with uh, the opportunity to host today. So. So, with that being said, I want to um, introduce our next keynote speaker. Uh, it's an absolute honor to, to be here with him today. Dr. Rodney Alper is not just a phenomenal doctor, but an extraordinary individual who has dedicated much of his expertise and time to the betterment of our community here. His commitment to community well-being has been truly exceptional, and we are fortunate to have him as a supporter of Still Our Rise. Since the inception date of our annual Healthy for the Holidays event in 2014, Dr. Alfred has graced us with his presence as a keynote speaker. His insightful talks have not only educated and inspired us, but has also set the tone for a healthier and more informed community. Over his illustrious career, Dr. Alfred has garnered numerous accolades and awards, a testament to his unwavering commitment to the field of medicine. Notably, he has served as a trustee of the Illinois State Medical Society, demonstrating his leadership and dedication to the medical community at large. With over 40 years of experience as an internal medicine and pediatric specialist, Dr. Alfred is a true expert in his field. He graduated from Loyola University of Chicago Stretch School of Medicine in 1982, further, further solidifying his foundation of knowledge and expertise. Today, we are not only privileged to have Dr. Alfred here as our keynote speaker, but also to share in the joy of his recent, recent accomplishment earlier this year as he was recognized and selected by his colleagues and the Illinois community as the Physician of the Year for the state of Illinois for the term of 2023 and 2024. Wow. This is a yeah. honor. <laughs> values about Dr. Alfred's dedication to his profession and the impact he has made on the lives of those he has served. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in extending a warm welcome to our distinguished keynote speaker, Dr. Rodney Alfred. Check 
back and see one four away. <laughs> But you know, and I and I still feel like I'm still doing some things. I'm, I'm so excited to have an opportunity to talk to you all. Uh, you all don't know I have more fun doing this than you all get out of this. I get much more out of this than you do. Um, I'm not sure. Um, should it, I hate to be in the way of people eating, um, and I feel like I'm standing in the way of lunch right now. So I want to make my comments as short as possible, so I don't. So I'm not the one holding you up from lunch. You know, is it? I'm okay. All right. <laughs> so, and then I do want to keep my comments as short as possible, but I want to make sure that that you get something out of this. Yes. Um, you know, because for me, this is absolutely essential. Uh, Derek, man, you, you you took it, man. I, I really appreciate what you said. Uh, it, it helped me. Um, and I know it helped some other folks here. Yes. I deal with the incarcerated right now, and many times they deal with issues that are that are you know near and dear to what you just mentioned. Suicide is, is a big deal. It is really a big deal. You mentioned it also, Mr. Hunt, that you know that this is that time of year when we see the highest level of suicides for all kinds of reasons. Most times it's because they're not dealing with family issues. Uh, family's not around, family is around. <laughs> you know, and you're dealing with all kinds of other emotional things. You know, sadness comes because you see everybody's happy and having joyful times, and, and you're feeling like, well, you know, I'm not feeling all that happy or joyful right now. Um, you know, I don't have everything I should have. I'm not the person I should be. All of these things come up. I was going to play a, 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 a video if we had had the opportunity. We don't have it. Uh, I was going to also play the audio of some some key speakers that I like to listen to, that I like to hear. Um, and one of them just happened to be, uh, you know, they call him hip hop, the hip hop uh, preacher, um, and he, he does some really, he says some really great things. Um, and my wife, you know, turned turned me on to to a lot of the things that um, that, that he says, and I and I, and I listened to him a lot. Um, Eric Thomas. Yeah, uh, oh, I was going to tell I was going to tell him that Eric Thomas is his man. <laughs> <laughs> my wife was in, and, and, and she did she did she got me started listening to some of those some of those quotes. Uh, and and you know, and I I want to be. Uh, that person, that speaker for people to just inspire and encourage um, to do things that, that normally you don't think that you could do or would do. Uh, so how I'm going to inspire you today is that I'm going to ask you a few questions and if you can answer the questions properly, I'm going to reward you. Is that all right? Okay. <laughs> okay. See, somehow or another that gets people to listen to <laughs> Unfortunately, I do. I, I got some glasses ordered today. I saw an eye doctor today, and, and I got some new glasses ordered because of uh, the present, you know, the glasses that I have. These are just those readers that you can get five dollars at Walgreens. Right. Um, I have a for Walgreens, but uh, I need to see. <laughs> so, um, some things you said. Also, I just want to recap some things you said there. Um, uh, that my life is not my own. To give, to, to take, to take. Uh, it really isn't. Uh, we're all here for each other. That's the purpose for us. That is our purpose. Is we are here for others. We were put on this earth to help others. Yes. And when we're when we're in the mode of doing that, then we're meeting our purpose. We're hey, meeting our purpose. We're actually doing what God wants us to do. You're we're walking in your purpose. You're walking in your purpose. The purpose is to help others, and I believe I'm walking in my purpose as well. You also said to be humble. Uh, humility is so important. Uh, all the accolades that, that I get, um, my wife keeps me humble. <laughs> she keeps me humble. She lets me know. He ain't none. <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> now, don't let the folks fill your head with all that stuff. <laughs> I like to stay humble, and it's important for me to stay humble uh, and realize that, you know, something that my mom told me many years ago, she, 
she always encouraged me. My mother was the biggest encourager. I didn't have a, a father in my life. Uh, I had a grandfather that, I, that I took a lot of uh, that took a lot of my time, um, but I didn't have a lot of um, uh, male influence in my life. So my mom was was that person. My mom was an entrepreneur. She did so much. I mean, she was a beautician. Uh, she she uh, she sold uh, food at the docks in Chicago. Uh, went to the docks and she would go and sell uh, things to the guys out there working on the docks. And then she would come back and she was a candy lady for the community. So people would come to the house and get the snow. You know, y'all know about the uh, some of y'all know about the Kool Aid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 She was that lady. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And I've done this a few times before in the past. I'm doing it a little bit different this time because I want to make sure that I'm, that I'm, I'm new every time that I'm now. I don't want to be boring. Um, so, question for all of you all. First one, raise your hand. I'm going to catch it. Okay, so, get ready. What's the most important meal of the day? Breakfast. Right. You can raise your hand. <laughs> okay, breakfast. Give me, give me a hand.
talk about. Um, so we need we need to have protein. What are proteins good for? Building the muscle, okay? Because that's what the muscle is made of. So you gotta have that. You gotta have that quick energy. You gotta have the muscle, but also you do have to have fat. That third macromolecule. You gotta have fat. You just don't have to have that as much as we take. <laughs> we take too much of it, and so our body does what to it? Stores it, and so we don't really want it because that is your your energy that's stored. So the carbohydrate is quick energy, the fat is the stored energy so that if you haven't eaten for a while, you have something there to work off of. Okay. So, and guess what? If you eat a lot of carbs, you'll store a lot of it as fat. So that's why you have to be careful of the carbs because they're going to be stored as fat. Uh, proteins are not stored as fat. Okay. So uh, just let so you know that. So that's number one. We, we hit number one. Okay. Uh, number two in my 10 tips for healthy holidays, I said don't don't skip breakfast. That was number one. Number two is eat a smaller supper at an earlier time of the day. Okay. Eat a smaller supper. So you know do 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 well at breakfast, lunch, and whatever. And but supper, you want that to be a smaller meal of the day. It doesn't mean it shouldn't be varied. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can have. Some just small portions. I listen to that one myself. I don't always, <laughs> but also eating at an earlier time, 4:30, 5:30, that kind of time for your supper. Um, most of us, um, you know, go to bed, you know, somewhere between three and six hours after that. And so you should have enough time to kind of burn it off as the day goes on. That's that's the reason you eat it fairly early, so you have an opportunity to actually burn it off. Okay, and. Uh, how do you burn it off? Well, that's number three. Number three is exercise in the evening is better than exercise in the morning. Why is that? Because you've just eaten those carbs and whatever else, so the best time to burn it off is while it's not stored as fat. Fat is harder to burn off than carbs. And so you want to burn it off fairly early. So maybe an hour and a half to two hours after you've eaten that largest meal of the day, which tends to be just just telling me, all of y'all tend to be the largest meal of the day. It shouldn't be, but that's what happens. But if you realize that and you know that that's really the best time to do your exercise uh, is about an hour and a half to two hours after you meet your chance to get into the system, that you're going to burn off more doing that with less exercise than if you do that same exercise in the morning. Studies have shown that it's very, it's very true. So if you're going to exercise, do I encourage you to do aerobic type exercises, okay, because what's the most important muscle of your body? There you go. Your hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so, <laughs> nice tip, right? So, so that's important, um, is that, um, in order for you to metabolize or break down those things that you've just eaten, then you've got to do aerobic type exercise. About 20 minutes or so a day is really enough. Um, if you at least do that much, a lot of people think, oh, I gotta put that hour in at the gym every, you know, every day. No, you don't. No, you don't. Not to stay healthy. No, you don't. And you can actually lose weight on just that. Uh, so about 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes is really enough. Really maximum, but every day. A lot of people say, Why well, just exercise on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? Well, you'll maintain whatever you're doing, you will maintain your weight at, at three times a week. Most folks don't need to maintain, most folks need to, need to lose. <laughs> so, try to get it in every day, and if you miss a day, then just make sure you do it the next. Uh, you know, I, I, I encourage you to uh, try to find a way you can get your exercise at home. Uh, because a lot of people feel like, well, I gotta go to the gym. This is gonna be hard for me to get there. You know, there's too many people there. I don't like going there. People are gonna be looking at me, exercise, all these kind of reasons not to go. Because we're all gonna make some kind of resolution, you know, uh, that we're gonna start working out more. We're gonna start doing more. We're gonna go to the gym. We're gonna get a gym membership. How many gym memberships are started in, in January that by March, not you. you. Don't do that to yourself. Don't beat yourself up like that. Make a decision that today I'm just going to put in 15, 20 minutes of, of exercise and just you know and just start doing that. 
or watch some some you know some exercise programs. Sean T, um, you all might have heard of, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, doing those kind of, those kind of things. He got 15, got 10 minute workout, 15 minute workout. Another one that my wife and I kind of like um, is um, what's his name? With Joe. Uh, grow, grow with, with Joe. Joe. Grow with Joe. Grow with Joe. Uh, you know, YouTube it. It is fun. She she got some good dancing stuff and some good exercise, aerobic stuff. Five, ten minutes, you know, you can do stuff like that. Uh, encourage that. Some of us are still stuck on, you know, sweating with the oldies. Uh, you know, Richard Simmons, for those of you that are over. <laughs> <laughs> those, those, those of you that are over 35, I don't know, uh, uh, Richard Simmons. And, uh, but yeah, yeah, uh, you know, all of those, they're still available. You can get all of that stuff on YouTube. You know, so if that's what you're stuck on, that's cool. Whatever it takes. I ain't sweating with the old I ain't got no problem with that. As long as you sweat. <laughs> That's what's important. So get that aerobic exercise in. I also ask that you know, throughout the day that you use number four is cutting the carbs. Um, you know, especially when we around this time of year, um, a lot of carbs being served. We go to these holiday parties and get togethers and stuff. Tons of carbs are gonna be served. And so you want to make sure that you uh, you know, in order to cut back on some of that stuff, eat a light snack before you go to the outing. You know, if you know you're going to a Christmas party, you know they're going to have all kinds of really good stuff there. Then make sure you eat yourself a light snack just to kind of fill yourself up a little bit so you don't go there hungry. If you go there hungry, just like any other time, if you allow yourself to get hungry, you're going to eat much more than you would have, and you're going to feel like me. I should have been eating You will do that. And so I encourage you not to do that. Um, I, another thing is before these big events, drink a lot of water. You yes. mentioned water, how important water is. Water is important for metabolism to help the food to be broken down, but it also is a nice filler to fill it up. And you know, a lot of people think, and you know, and you all don't have to raise your hand, because I know it happened. If you eat at supper at like 4 35, 6 o'clock, 6 30, 9 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock. I wasn't I was not peeking in your house. I promise you, I wasn't peeking in your house. But nine ten o'clock you walk over to the refrigerator to find out what's in there. <laughs> and you know good well there ain't nothing in there healthy that you prepared already for when that time comes. So what I encourage you to do is have a big bottle of water. Okay, maybe flavored water for those of you like myself who don't like to drink plain water. Have some flavored water, something that you can take a swig of to fill. Tea is fine too, as long as you're not putting a little bunch of sugar and stuff in it. Um, but something you can fill your stomach up with because your brain, you know, because it's, it's worked in a way where your hunger center and your thirst center are very close to each other, and your body doesn't know which it is. You are truly thirsty at that time of night. You're not hungry. You just ate just a few hours ago, and you just ate the biggest meal of your day. Tell the truth. <laughs> so you're not hungry three hours, four hours later. You're thirsty. Your body is thirsty because we, none of us, for the most part, drink enough water fluids throughout the day. And so your body is telling you, I need something, I need thirst. And that's why we go find ourselves aimlessly walking toward the refrigerator <laughs> to open it up because you really need some, you need some hydration. And so you should be hydrating yourself at that time. So uh, that's very, very important. Um, I, I encourage people during the holidays particularly, don't deprive yourself of the foods that you like. If you like banana pudding, sweet potato pie, these kind of things, Make sure you get a little of that. Don't deprive yourself of those things. You just can't eat the whole pie. <laughs> Don't eat the whole thing. I mean, if you like bread, well, that's cool. You cut you a little chunk, eat that, and be satisfied that, hey, I got some. Right. You know, because if you deny yourself of it, you're going to crave it. And then when you find it, you get a chance, you're going to eat too much of it. So don't deprive yourself of it. But when you go to these holiday parties, there are all these different types of desserts. Don't feel like you got to have every dessert right now. <laughs> that night. Take some home. 
you know, take some of them so in different containers so that you can have one night, you can have this one, the next night you can have that one. So you so you actually can, you know, can, can not overdo it because it's easy to do that. Uh, number five, um, I, I'm just going to ask a question. Ready? Does spirituality matter when it comes to being healthy? Yes. 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 Okay, all of y'all. You know, give yourself a dollar. <laughs> Spirituality most definitely matters. There have been so many studies done that show that the people that are more spiritual, and, I, and I'm saying this being very general, and you write right it and not wanting to insult anyone's uh, uh, belief system. Um, because there's so many different belief systems out there. I, I tend to believe what I believe is true. Um, and I believe, as you believe, that Christ is the answer. Yes. But other people may have other belief systems, and whatever that might be, they have found.